Hey guys, in this video, the lovely Tim is going to be talking about Francis Walsingham and his role in Elizabethan England. Now, there are lots of people and dates and things that they did to remember here to help you remember all of these for your revision. Over on my website, there are a whole a load of multiple choice questions just waiting for you. As is common for the Elizabethan era, we do not have precise written government records about the life, especially the early life, of Francis Walsingham. The best that can be said is that he was born in about 1532, in the area somewhere around Chislehurst in Kent. His father was William Walsingham, an extremely well-connected London lawyer, who had been involved in a royal investigation and commission. His mother was Joyce Denny, who was a daughter of and sister of existing courtiers of the royal family. His brother was Edmund Walsingham, who was Lieutenant of the Tower of London, both a loyal post in the government and also an important one. Francis Walt attended Cambridge University, but as was common for higher individuals of the time, he did not actually gain a university degree. Especially for undergraduates of high social standing, they would usually move on quickly before graduation. In 1558, as Mary I came to power, Walsingham fled, along with other senior Protestants, and finished his studies in Padua and Basel on the European continent. As the Catholic Mary I died and Elizabeth I succeeded to the throne in England, it became safe for exiled and known Protestants to return to England, sure of a warm welcome. Through the support of relatives, William was quickly elected to Parliament. He represented Bossiney in Cornwall and would continue to sit in Parliament for many years, representing a number of seats. This was not unusual at the time, and in fact is still not unusual today. Walsingham very quickly became prominent in supporting rebellious French Protestants. In 1570, Queen Elizabeth appointed him to work with them in negotiations with the French monarchy. Following his return from France, Walsingham was appointed to the Privy Council, and he became Joint Secretary of State, an extremely senior and responsible position. Francis Walsingham has three main roles in both the court and government of Elizabeth I. Each of these was a distinct role, and each influenced the other two. Firstly, and most importantly, Walsingham was Elizabeth's spymaster. His main role at court was to be the eyes and ears of the Queen and the monarchy, both in England but critically abroad. His work of spies and the subtlety with which he worked was famed both in England and in Europe more generally. Secondly, Walsingham was a policy maker. He formulated and directed government policy. His particular area of expertise and interest was merchants and the business community, of which he was especially supportive. Third and finally, Walsingham was a planner and advisor, planning government policy, and he advised the Queen, especially on foreign policy, based on his experiences abroad. By 1585, there had been a series of assassinations in Europe. Fears begin to grow about the safety of the person of Elizabeth I herself. Elizabeth, indeed, began to grow paranoid, distrusting those around her, and sleeping with a dagger under her pillow. Walsingham in particular feared that she may be targeted by disaffected and rebellious Catholics, either in England or from abroad. Acts of Parliament were swiftly passed at the behest of the Queen, giving draconian punishment and legal process to any type of sedition or rivalry to the Queen in any way. Mary Queen of Scots was a particular focus, as we will see when we look at her in particular. Elizabeth I and Walsingham viewed her as a potential rival to the throne, and therefore as a threat. Walsingham entrapped Mary. He used a series of false letters which Mary believed were secure and were from her friends. When Mary was presented with the evidence by Walsingham of her treason, she broke down in tears. She quickly realised the extent of the trouble that she was now in, likely leading to her, her imprisonment and probable execution. In doing so, Francis Walsingham was able to remove a major threat to the crown, and to Elizabeth specifically, but also a threat to his own authority. Had Mary, Queen of Scots, or any other Catholic monarch come to power, it would have been highly unlikely that Walsingham would have retained his position and influence. In 1587, Elizabeth signed the warrant for Mary to be executed, and this was carried out swiftly. As Elizabeth's spymaster and head of intelligence, Walsingham developed a network of contacts and spies all over Europe but especially in Spain. From 1586 onwards, Walsingham began to receive rumour and scattered reports of a growish, growing Spanish naval investment, a building up of the Spanish Navy, and a possible preparation for the Spanish Navy to attack and invade England. At the behest of Elizabeth, therefore, Walsingham started work to prepare England and its navy for the forthcoming invasion. 
Espionage was not unusual in Europe during the Elizabethan era, but Walsingham was unusual in both his skill and the dedication and professionalism that he brought to the task. In particular, compared to spy masters before him, he cast his net of spies wider, even so far as Turkey, then at the very edge of the known world. This was in an effort to control information and to further protect the Queen and the English state more generally. Depictions and historical accounts of Walsingham, who is pictured here, have varied massively. They've tended to vary by the religious outlook of the person writing, especially in contemporary accounts. To Protestants, he was a noble figure using his skills to defend the Queen and Protestantism and England in general. A common description was that he was a sound pillar of our commonwealth and chief patron of virtue, learning and chivalry. To Catholics, however, there was an opposite view. They thought of him as a dark and repressive figure who worked in the shadows behind the throne. He was often described by them as cruel and inhumane. Portrayals of Walsingham in fiction or in popular culture have generally focused on the latter aspect. In private, due to incomplete record, is known for sure about Walsingham. But it is clear he gradually built up huge debts to the crown. In 1590, Walsingham died. As is common during the Elizabethan era, we don't have precise details of his death and what caused it, but it's possible he died of either testicular cancer or kidney failure, based on what we do have. Ouch! This is when somebody is, I've had explained scratches. 